welcome to this review of X-Men Origins Wolverine. As always, I am your host, Captain Jackhammer, and I thank you for joining me. After X-Men The Last Stand devolved into overcrowded mayhem, someone had the bright idea to serve up an old-fashioned prequel as a means to restoring some of the integrity to the franchise. But the result is belabored and underpowered. What might have served as a five-minute prologue to a much better movie is stretched out to interminable and incomprehensible lengths. The opening holds promise for a kind of superheroic retelling of the Cain and Abel story. In 19th century Canada, two young boys huddle in a bedroom, where Victor, played by Michael James Olson, complains that his friend, James, played by Tyrone Sivan, is always sick. James's father enters the room, and moments later there's a loud noise at the front door. The burst of action that follows leaves both boys' fathers murdered. There is also a shocking revelation. These young lads, both of whom have very unusual powers, actually are stepbrothers. It's a shame they should grow up to be such deadly dull creations after fighting together in the Civil War, World War I, World War II, and the Vietnam War, the immortal mutants James, now dubbed Logan, played by Hugh Jackman of course, and Victor, aka Victor Creed, played by Liv Shriver, are driven apart by a shady government figure named William Stryker, played by Danny Hudson, who's clearly up to no good. Part of the trouble with X-Men Origins Wolverine is that it doesn't do an especially good job explaining the origins of these mutants. We never really understand, for instance, when James and Victor's powers first become apparent, or why Creed is so bloodthirsty. Nor does it make very much sense that these figures should age precisely to the point where they look like Hugh Jackman and Liv Shriver, and then never age another day after that. Actually, the bigger problem with origin stories is that they rarely hold much interest to anyone other than the most hardcore comic book fans in the crowd. This new movie trouts out one mutant after another, including John Wraith, who can appear and disappear at will, and this guy named Bolt, played by Dominic Mohagen, and poor Ryan Reynolds shows up for the first 10 minutes as Wade Wilson and then disappears until the final 10 minutes when he re-emerges as Deadpool. A kind of uber mutant whose powers are cobbled together from a half a dozen other mutants. But if you're not intimately acquainted with the comic book series, you won't care about any of these people. And you won't entirely understand what they're doing here. Hugh Jackman trudges the proceedings with his teeth bared and his jaws clenched and you want to buy him a mouth guard for fear he's going to end up costing himself a fortune at the dentist. Liv Shriver at least tries to inject the proceedings with a bit of sinister playfulness, but he's stuck trying to make sense of a senseless creation. So far as I could determine, Creed begins killing people because he's suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. And the character disappears for such long lengths of time that it's impossible for the actor to generate any momentum. The fight scenes are good, but is that what this generation of moviegoers has devolved into? That what makes a movie good or bad is the quality of the fight scenes, regardless of whether or not the writing is any good? Oh yeah, I forgot. The Mutant franchise scrapes the bottom of the barrel with X-Men Origins Wolverine, a movie that tells us everything we never wanted to know about the history of Logan. And although I think Hugh Jackman does a great job as Wolverine, there's only so much a good actor can do with a bad screenplay. Therefore, I can only give X-Men Origins Wolverine a 6.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. I'm Captain Jackhammer, and I will see you next time.